Victor, super important. What? 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 This time, don't say anything in between. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. I'm so wasted! It doesn't even surprise me anymore. <laughs> it's horrible. We have to change the intro. We need a new engineer. We need another engineer who's not dead. <laughs> To change our intro so that people understand that it's not that kind of wasted. No, this is not the Gonjaria show. That's a two for one, by the way, just for the record, Victor. I, yeah. I don't even know what to say to I know. You anymore. You're proud of me. So, <laughs> no, it's more like we're going to be a complete waste of your time, like the cast and crew of La La Land's acceptance speech for Best Picture. <laughs> Instead, that, that stings. <laughs> yeah, that useful, productive hour will be replaced by two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions that they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. With that said, if for some god-awful reason you enjoy wasting the precious time you have left on this earth, search for another wasted hour on all social media sites, share, follow, mention, and like and review us. Also, do us a solid and please subscribe to Another Wasted Hour on iTunes and Google Music and review us there, preferably nicely. Something, you know, cordial. That'd be great. We'd appreciate that. Well, now that you know why you're here, I'm Keith and across from me is my co-host, Victor. Victor, why are you here this week? I have the solution. The ultimate solution. What? What the answer to all of our problems yeah. oh. for immigration. What? They want to build a wall? Yeah. Don't need it anymore. You don't We're need a cool. wall. We're cool. Don't need it. Not going to have any Mexicans coming up from Mexico crossing the border illegally. Right. We, are you ready? Yes. We annex Mexico. <laughs> we just take it over. We just end. It was like, yeah, like kind of, you know, you give somebody a subpoena, like you've been yeah. served. Well, you've been added. You, you are now part of the United States. 51st the state. 51st <laughs> state. Sorry, Washington, D.C. We love Sorry, your Puerto taco Rico. trucks. Mexico. <laughs> All of Mexico, the 51st state. Done. Right. Do you think that New Mexico would get jealous? <laughs> like... no, no, we'll just name it Old Mexico. <laughs> right. New Mexico and Old Mexico. Do you think North Carolina is superior to South Carolina? Do you no. think we change New Mexico to just Millennial Mexico? <laughs> right. And then that way it feels hip. Right. And Are we say it, you know, Mexico or something like right. that. Right. No, I like it. I think that there's some really good. It's a lot easier to get to Cabo at that point. Right. Don't even need a passport. No, not at all. No, yeah. no, no more of like the importation taxation nonsense that you need to worry. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Nobody's crossing legally because nope. they all have all the same rights over there. They can now be miserable and part of the United States at the same time. See and see how much money we would save on a, a southern wall because it's way thinner down there. <laughs> like, just put it right there. Like you can get across right. that pretty easy. <laughs> Yep. And we like triple the amount of sand we have in the U.S. I think uh, I think what you're, that wall is just referred to as jungle. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> impenetrable yeah, jungle. It's, it's the the crossing the 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 border patrol is just a, a jaguar, <laughs> <laughs> a really angry, hungry jaguar. Why don't we just go all the way down to Panama and then we could just stop at the Panama no, Canal and be no. like, it's a moat. We don't like. We have a moat now. We don't like Panamanians. No, no. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, I just made that up now, but uh, <laughs> you know. Well, now that you're in charge of such things, <laughs> right? Hey, I came up with a solution. That's true. I, don't, I shouldn't have to do any more work after that. Yeah, well, that's fair. You you are the genius behind the idea. Right. So I'm solving world problems. Why yeah. are you here? Well, I regret to inform our listening audience that I will not be attending the White House correspondence dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I just I got a lot on my plate. I won't be able to make it. It's okay. I hear a lot of people are going to be missing it. Yeah. Year. Well, I wasn't technically invited, but <laughs> but I figured they want me there just as much as they wanted well, Trump there. Well, now they there. know. Now they so, know you're not, you're not going to be there. Yeah, but I'm not going to I'm not going to be I might I might as maybe a waiter. That's the only <laughs> chance I have. Is perhaps like would you like chicken or steak? That would be <laughs> that would be the whole presentation. Yep. that I do. There you go. Um, but I'm, I'm sad that I'll be missing it. It's hard to imagine you, like, in any memory that I have of you yeah. without without a microphone in front of you and the headphones on. Sure. But I just feel like you, the waiter, exactly from uh, Fight Club, as he's walking around with the headphones, <laughs> not giving a fuck, just dropping buns on the table. <laughs> That's Keith at the White House Correspondents Dinner. I would like to think that even with that, I would still be wearing headphones and carrying a microphone. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. That's He's, he's wearing these big old uh, headphones. Right. Not right. listening to what people are saying. Just... Thump. Bread. I would just be like, hey, everybody. Um, 
Welcome to the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're not the show. You're a waiter. Can, yeah. I, have, can I have some more <laughs> champagne, please? It is not that type of wasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, without further ado, we have even more people who are wasting even more precious time with us. Uh, we have, uh, obviously, we announced this last week. Uh, we have a huge friend of the show and supporter. Uh, our yeah, friend. I'd say he's normal size. I mean, he's a yes. normal guy. Well, you know, in certain areas. And so, <laughs> Yellow Tie Guy, otherwise known as Daniel, is here. Say hi. Hello. Excellent. How now, are you? He actually dragged someone in from outside who I assume is living there. And um, <laughs> I know uh, no idea. It's, he says her name is Shannon. And that she's in a band, but I don't know if that's true. Is is that true? I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, actually, right. yes, I, I am. I'm in a different band. Though. In a different I'm band. In a different so, band. I, so I, which one of those two statements is the lie? I don't, right. don't no, trust I, the bad lady. <laughs> <laughs> don't engage with her. She's going to just make up more lies. I mean, we just mad. We wouldn't get engaged. Keith, stop exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first time you've ever had two bands at the same time? Yes, it yeah. is. It's been some. What well, would you I, do with a million dollars? Yeah, <laughs> I experimented once in college. I'll admit, and I was uh, I was in a couple of bands then, but uh, this is the first time in a long time. And um, so, your band, Daniel, uh, is a uh, yellow tie guy. You are the yellow tie guy. It is. It's a. It's you know a blur. You try to explain that I am and we are, and and it sounds very much like we are the walrus. You know, yeah. Goo-goo-goo-goo-goo-goo, yeah. <laughs> but it's like Hootie and the Blowfish, except you're actually Hootie, right? Not like Darius Rucker, who's like, I'm not. No, we made that name up. That's not a person. It's really. It started as a nickname gone awry, and then yeah, and then the band that I was playing with when we recorded the first record was just too lazy to change the name. They were given the <laughs> opportunity to, but. They chose not to, and now everyone hereafter must suffer the consequences. I did the same thing. I was uh, for 17 years in a band called the Dreamscapes Project, and essentially, yeah, every time we'd go, "This is a horrible name. This is we should <laughs> really fucking change this name." And then we're like, "Ah," but then we got to get a new website. We got to get a logo. Got to learn to spell a new word. Yeah, like <laughs> it's not worth it. Nobody cares. <laughs> and so, last band I was in had the word "peace" in it, like yeah. a piece of pie. Oh my God, that was a bitch to learn. Yeah, I before E, but there's a C in it. No, nope. that doesn't apply because it's, it's after. after. And yeah, then... yeah. <sighs> now we all have to sit here just in awe of the fact that Shannon has a band named Since Antarctica, which is awesome. We all have shitty name bands, right? And you go pick an awesome sounding name band. How did that happen? How did you not end up with a shitty sounding band name? Uh, well, I would tell you, but uh, there's there's a certain penguin who <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about it. But I will say this. Um, if you Google since Antarctica, yeah. we are definitely the first result. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else. No one's yeah. been, has been to Antarctica. Yeah. That's and, like and the you best, don't... most surreptitious self-promotion ever. Right yeah. there, real <laughs> not saying, but maybe you should just hit <laughs> feeling lucky because <laughs> you will be. And you don't even have to spell it right. Uh, Google knows what you mean. <laughs> so <laughs> we, I, I see the search results come into the website and it's like, that's one misspelling, two misspelling. Well, I didn't know there were that many ways to spell Antarctica. I like the fact that there those might are be... all me. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to pull those people who were trying to like, uh, how long has it been since I've been to Antarctica? And they're like, oh, music. <laughs> and like, like, what are you searching for if it's not for your band? I can't imagine how long has it been since Antarctica was an actual continent you could step on. I don't know. Like what? Oddly enough, we we do Zero? get we do get a lot of people who are searching for something else, but it's the title to one of our songs. Oh, what's that one? Uh, Beautiful Agony, and I would not recommend Googling that at work. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have that bookmarked. <laughs> I uh, All right, so excellent. So we've got two bands. Obviously, the rules of the show state that you two will have to fight, and um, and one band leaves at the end of the night. That's... That's just how the tr- uh, how it works here. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Add it to the body count. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so without further ado, now that we've gotten to know both of you, uh, we are going to have you guys involved uh, with something regrettable that we like to call uh, the weather report. Uh, tell them, Victor, you say it right. So go ahead. <laughs> well, we throw headlines and stories at you that we found in the news, and you decide whether or not it should have been in the news. Like, is it real news or not? Yeah. Maybe it's fake news. 
Yeah. Well, that's what we're learning, right? Everything is right. fake news. Everything is fake news. Has it been researched and does it have facts? Fake news. Yes. All right. So I'll start it off with a uh, story that I'm really quite proud of. Uh, I found this one out of uh, out of England. Apparently, they've taught bees how to play football and score goals. Um, now, of course, since it's out of Britain, uh, it means that football is actually soccer because uh, that's the real name for it. And <laughs> we what they found is that bumblebees not only can learn how to play football, soccer, but they can also teach each other how to score goals with a tiny little ball, displaying learning abilities never seen before in insects. Wow. Isn't that pretty cool? It's very incredible. Now, so, yes. wait, they have six legs. Okay. So you don't even need a ref. There's no way to cheat. They don't have any arms. <laughs> I feel like it, <laughs> it would it be anything. more cost effective to teach them Quidditch because they can fly. That, like That's a good point. I mean, why are we teaching them how to do something with their legs? Right. They're like, no, you have to walk. Stop <laughs> flying with the ball. You're not allowed to do that, B. It's like, I don't get <laughs> Put that why. shit down. This is an ineffective, ineffective way of locomotion. <laughs> how do the bounds calls even work in three dimensions? <laughs> that's true. How high can you go before it? It's out of bounds. We they, we put them in a glass box. <laughs> <laughs> so the question that it uh, raises to me, right, is because I think they make a really good point. There's a, this amazing leap uh, about how insects can learn. Like there's an intelligence there that we weren't aware of before. Or soccer is so easy <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. even fucking bumblebees can do it. So let's not get so excited about Ronaldo. I'm just saying... <laughs> He's very good at a bumblebee sport. Okay, right. But has it, have the bees actually learned to fake injuries and 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 exaggerate how how in pain? No, nah, man, are? those fuckers keep going. They lose a leg, and they're like, "That's nah, cool." <laughs> Touchdown celebration dances. Yeah. Excessive celebration squish. <laughs> so the question is: Is it news or not news? I'll call it news. Yeah, winner. <laughs> so goal. <laughs> Like All right, we'll see you guys in half an hour when he's done. <laughs> it occurs to me bees don't even need vuvuzelas; they've got them built in. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, really they can be annoying anyway. <laughs> this should be a league. We need to start a bee league. Bee league. <laughs> uh, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say, Daniel? I I, I think uh, I think I believe in this in this job, <laughs> this project right here. You're you're gonna hate I'm them. A, by I'm, the a end of it. I'm a beleaguer. <laughs> You don't, you're not. I was going to say something like meaningful and interesting. But yeah. I just want to go home now. Now your head hurts because yes. of the puns. Oh. Victor has an allergy to puns. So. Oh. And you put him in a room with Daniel? I yeah, know. It's totally in trouble. Oh, something wow. about people named Dan. I don't right. know. They're always punny. Another uh, fact that you don't know. I hate Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Another fact that you probably know. I love the shit out of Keith <laughs> and he hates it. Yes. It's great. Very, very true. So, all right. All right. I got a good story for you. Russian ex cop tried to build a zombie army by killing the homeless and performing satanic rituals on their body for resurrection. No problem with that at all. <laughs> no. Nope. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> no big How deal. else would you do it? <laughs> I'm going to kill this bag lady right here in the studio and make an army out of her. Now, were, were, were you pointing at Shannon or Dan? <laughs> Wait, which one's this one? <laughs> they look know. so you, similar. You pointed between them. <laughs> but yeah, apparently this guy just went on like a massive murdering spree and they finally Jeez. caught him mid-ritual. <laughs> trying to raise an army of the undead. You would think he wouldn't get caught if it worked, right? He's right. Like, so they catch him, and he's like, "Everyone, help me! Help! Just they're they're cuffing me right now. Can you just get up and stop being lazy, you dead people?" It's, they're not they're not moving at all. No, nope. you uh <laughs> you spent a lot of time on that. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, but did he? Did fuck, he? I mean, Russia. God damn. Did, did he have one and then try to resuscitate, or did he like get the army of bodies and then try to resuscitate them all? Right, you would think you'd try with one and yeah, then yeah. fail once. <laughs> I need to pivot on this a little. <laughs> this is not working. New spell. Learning process. Maybe Learning we process. need to reapproach this uh, stratagem. Like here. he just carves a square in their chest and is like, rise. Nope. Okay, circle on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, triangle. Yeah, he walks in as the uh, walks in like the cops walk in. Watching, he's just carving a dodecahedron. They're like, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's doesn't matter how many polygons are involved. <laughs> right. You didn't. 
you didn't say the right words or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he was doing wrong. But... Got to get the shape and the words right. You know, yeah. the combination. But seriously, man, the shit that happens here, we're like, oh, that's serious. But Russia's always like, no, we got this. But yeah. it, <laughs> always. Russia will always one up us on it's, fucked upness. It's just because it's all ice. They need something to do. <laughs> right, yeah. Is Russia the Florida man of the world? It is. Either that or Germany. I guess. So what do you guys say? News or not news? Not news. Not, not news. No. Not, not in Russia. Success, success makes it news. Not success <laughs> makes it just, you know, one more crazy person if with a If he succeeded, we'd be in big fucking trouble. Right. <laughs> you what can't you have think? news without the proper application of the scientific method, which clearly he didn't. Right. So <laughs> uh, Failure, not wait. news. <laughs> Do you just, want to inform I'm, the current administration of what you just said? Because I feel taking... like they missed that memo. I'm just taking my lessons learned from the B thing forward through all of these. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, so maybe this will be news for you guys. Uh, so uh, Spain reported a higher number of deaths than births for the first time last year. So what they've done now is they have appointed a sex czar to help boost the declining population. That means that they have a government figure now who's like, welcome to Spain. You should fuck. <laughs> like... That's amazing, because I want that job. <laughs> Keith I, and I walk in, and they say that to us. We're like, uh, I think you're doing a job very well. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to be able to do the thing that you're hoping <laughs> is going to happen. Work. I mean, we'll try. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. Practice makes perfect. Well, uh, <laughs> see, scientific method, Keith. Scientific method. <laughs> Run! Army of sex slaves! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two news stories together is really, <laughs> really seals the deal there. Uh, so that's all I got to say about that. That makes its own news, <laughs> in my sounds... opinion. Wow. Brilliant. It's I, brilliant. Sad is we the word one. I was going to go with. I'm pretty sure Denmark already did that a couple of years ago, though. Oh, like, I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that, do you think Spain went, um, do you have any tips like Denmark on like how to have a sex zone? <laughs> so is it news or not news? Uh, it's tough. I don't know. I, I can't, I can't make a decision. <laughs> this is it's, your only job, this bit. It's my only job is, uh, <laughs> let's see, the sex are, I have to say that I, I can appreciate the potential, you know, money that could come in from tourism. Yeah. I really do appreciate <laughs> the, the potential tourism. <laughs> They're going to sell that? Are they fucking in public? <laughs> <laughs> come to our country and do it. <laughs> oh, no, like, like, do it here. That would be the... <laughs> Yeah, do it here. Go to here. Spain. Spain. <laughs> no, Spain. The, we have changed what running of the bulls means. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> what do you say, Shannon? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm. Uh, we'll we'll call it. If I apply the same standard from the first two stories, yeah. I think I have to wait for the results of the sex are <laughs> and were they successful? Later, Shannon. Later. She wants to go investigate. <laughs> we're going to go, find out have to go check this out. We're going to knock on a lot of doors in Madrid. Okay, so we're Do on. Do we have hold. any talent agents over there? That can... <laughs> Get something going. We're apparently on sex hold for the news. I like that they, you know, they consider like criteria for this. We had somebody literally flip a coin. Yes. <laughs> no. It's a show before. Yes. Uh, and the person across them just literally disagreed the whole time. That, that's a good stick too, though. That's a good stick. Yeah, it is. Consistency. So here's one. Speaking of sex, burglar breaks into sex shop, passes on over $25,000 worth of electronics equipment he could have stolen, watches a porno, and then steals an inflatable love doll. <laughs> he went on a spree. Yes, <laughs> he, just, he did. Uh, the owner, he came in through the skylight. Okay. The owner was like, dude, it's it, there's cheap shit in here. You don't need to break in. <laughs> he just walked in and paid like six bucks for that doll. <laughs> but he's like, he knew something was wrong, not only because of the actual break-in, but because the porn was still on loop. In the DVD player. Nice. And the doll was gone. <laughs> the box was empty. So my question is, what the hell was that guy's actual intention? Oh, no. Breaking in. They actually had a report. The uh, the police walked in on him carving a shape into the chest of the doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I was just going to assume that it was like somebody's Mission Impossible uh, finish, <laughs> and they actually have to break into the building to really, you know, hump, hump, get there. hump, 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 <laughs> hump, 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 hump. <laughs> Hump, 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 hump. Nobody's gonna help me. <laughs> no, nobody's gonna help me. We're just gonna watch you. <laughs> you could have used some type of horrible word. You know what usually happens when somebody starts singing is then. Need more loo. There you go. Yeah, there you go. 
If Somebody, we had planned it, this would have gone really well, but we're we're not. Good I was at just gonna watch you suffer because <laughs> you, your face was like, no one, no, I'm gonna keep Shannon, going. Uh, I more. don't remember. Did I mention earlier that I hate Victor? Um, yeah. yes, okay. yes, I think still so. do, still hate Victor. Just, okay. just for the. I'll record. make a note. Yeah. So, what do you think? News? Not news? Bueller? Uh, yes, news. He yeah! was successfully successfully robbed the sex shop. You know. Through a skylight. Through a skylight. He got in, Mission got out, and got style. off. Yeah. And Do you think he was like doing this, like where he's balancing I can from only the imagine. harness, and then he's just like, and he's trying to like not touch the floor, but he's also like putting his penis <laughs> like, <laughs> in into the doll. doll. <laughs> like, eh, and da, there's, a, da, 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 da. there's a drop, a single drop of sweat falls. That's not what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I didn't say from where it was or from whence it came. All oh, right, wow. so, <laughs> oh, so this is my favorite uh, of the of the entire week. Uh, this is a little segment. It's a couple of stories that I like to call leaks for weeks. Um, so, as you know from the uh, Trump administration, there's been some a real crackdown on leaks to the public or for, to the uh, press. They're very upset about it. Uh, they feel like the Obama administration was not particularly uh, professional or secure with the way they handled things. Um, so uh, this week, uh, they are cracking down on it. Uh, the U.S. government uh, put out a memo about the dangers of leaking, uh, uh, about the danger of leaking to the media. <laughs> I was going to say, there's, yeah. that's got some implications. Uh, they said leaking is to the detriment of uh, the reputation of the institution from which the leak emanated. Uh, it was a four-page document, which was then leaked! <laughs> <laughs> the document telling people not to leak thing they're just doing it to piss them off now <laughs> yeah. it was, yeah. right it wasn't even worthless <laughs> I mean, there's something in it that you're like yeah i got it okay we're not supposed to leak but they're like ah, go well, ahead right Who one cares? person was like i'm not supposed to on um, leaks this has got to reach the outside <laughs> this is too good so you would think that that's the end of it no not at all so now they're more angry right they're like, this is, oh, so mad. So Press Secretary Spicer reportedly held a surprise search of his staffers' phones to ferret out any leaks. According to the report, staffers were expected to call, uh, or unexpectedly called into Spicer's office last week. They were ordered to leave their phones and mobile devices on a table which uh, to be searched, uh, which uh, to ensure that they had nothing to hide. The process was reportedly overseen by the White House lawyers, and Spicer uh, followed it up with a warning that there would be more problems if any reports regarding the phone check leaked. Which it was then leaked! <laughs> there are now more problems! <laughs> the security uh, is just overwhelming. I love the amount of sarcasm that the people <laughs> in the government now have. They're just like, uh... I love irony. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't leak this. And I mean it this time. Right. <laughs> Leaked. Damn it. Okay. Okay. You know this what? Time. This time. It's like you're drawing the line in the sand and then taking two steps back. New line in the sand. Like you're drawing a line in the sand, <laughs> standing in the water. <laughs> it's not wise. <laughs> so there you go. Is it news or not news? Um. I don't know. We'll we'll have to wait on a determination to come out of uh, a secret memo, whether it's news. There, there'll be a memo that leaks that says it was news. Well, or it'll, not. it'll it'll say it's fake news. <laughs> hashtag fake news. Yeah. TBD. Memo. TBD. That's what I'm hoping. I hope the hashtag gets into like presidential memos. <laughs> hashtag fake news, just <laughs> in writing. Like I hope he spells it out too. Oh, geez, writes the word <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> what do you say, Daniel? News or not news? Well, initially, I thought that this was a whole segment about the White House being, you know, anti beans. <laughs> but, okay. But uh, no. Uh, leaks for weeks. Leaks. Ah. Leaks for weeks. Yes. And now, now Trump hates beans too. Uh, are leeks beans? They're, they're, they're more of an onion, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, oniony thing. Yeah. Leaks, are they? Yeah, yeah they're, they're like, like the, the stalk whole... thing. I, oh, I have them confused with. Uh, 
Beans. Well, no. <laughs> that's, that's what you have them confused with. Uh, lentils. Lentils. I had it confused with lentils. Lentils for oh. weeks. Doesn't really. Lentils for weeks. No, you think okay. You're thinking Lent? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it's news either way. I don't know. Ah, I thought I had it this time. Sorry, man. Uh, no, it would be. It, I mean, the first one is news, right? Right. And and then. Then the second one's double news. The second. I mean, you. <laughs> you can't just keep special a, news. attracting a tra attention to the same thing. It's like it's eventually where it's uh, it's. It's, it's don't look shares, where I'm pointing. Share's <laughs> right. retirement show, you know, like one more, one more show, you right? Know, right. And, <laughs> final show. We really promise. We really promise. I this like time the people are pointing. Show. They're like, "There's a leak in the dam." Right. There's a leak in the dam. There's a leak. Another leak in the dam. The guy's like, "That's just a river. You're just pointing just at a river. <laughs> There's no dam. It's a big leak. That, that better not be a leak in the dam. It's a leak in the dam." <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one more for you guys. Last week. Keith brought up a uh, new segment about a guy who got stuck face down in a chimney doing parkour. We assume, we don't know, but his face was pretty messed up. <laughs> yes. This guy, it's got a picture of him covered yeah. in soot, uh, pain in the ash, colon. Cops find soot covered suspect stuck in chimney. He was <laughs> trying to rob <laughs> this one place. It's a copycat he, parkour. He went in face first. Was it a sex store? <laughs> no, that, guy, that guy got in, got out, and got off. <laughs> he saw it in a CCTV video once. Yeah, but seriously, like, who, who did it, you're going down a chimney, you go face first? <laughs> Why? Nobody does that, not even Santa. Yeah. that was That's the dumbest way to do We've it. We've heard of people who go slip and slides, like, Feet first <laughs> on their belly. On their belly. <laughs> <And> the <laughs> this guy's going way. face down in a chimney? Don't do that. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. You need to teach your children early on. Listen here, kids. If you're ever breaking into a place through the chimney, you do not go face first. What if there's a fire at the bottom? They've obviously never seen Mary Poppins. No, <laughs> obviously <laughs> not. It's a whole lost generation. Well, the cops reported it as the uh, single easiest arrest they've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> I think he's in there. Should we just leave him there? <laughs> <laughs> it's, already, it's already jail, basically. Right. We don't even have to go through the process. We don't even have to feed him in there. <laughs> <laughs> just let him die. Just drop it in. <laughs> so... I I don't expect that to be that exciting. You just find it uh, rather amusing because people just love getting stuck in chimneys. But is it news? That's the question. It's a tale as old as time. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All right. So we is news a tale that's old as time? <laughs> uh, the word new is in news. Yeah. Old tale, that's not so newsy. No, you don't think so? Wait up. I'm kind of going against myself here. I have I? no idea how we went from Mary Poppins to Beauty and the Beast, but I'm just not going to <laughs> I'll go say, into that. I'll say not news because it's, again, it's a fail win situation, right? So right. the bees are playing soccer. Sure. Okay. News. Sex right. shop guy is successful. That's news. The sex are, you know, that's exciting. Yeah. That's like it's great. a new position. No pun intended. <laughs> and, it is. And so on sure, his staff, this is not news because it's <laughs> it's totally fail. This is just like watching that guy not land, you know, the rail trick. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you're still not good. Yeah, <laughs> you're trying to flip <laughs> a water bottle and it falls over, and you're like, "Well, that's not." Let's go home. Why is this on YouTube? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the weather report. Excellent. Uh, so we have you in studio, obviously, uh, to to talk about uh, the show that you have coming up. Um, which did we even talk about? I don't. I feel like we skipped over that altogether. Did you say anything about it? We we were mentioned we were in bands. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You're yeah. terrible at promoting yourself. <laughs> you know that? So the show is on uh, March 11th. That's a Saturday. It is. It's kind of different, though, because uh, usually to do is you go out Saturday night and uh, you go see bands and stuff. You guys are doing a matinee show. A matinee show. That's yeah. right. We decided to do a show when most musicians were just waking up. <laughs> to keep them out, right? Right. So they keep the riffraff out. <laughs> So it's from noon to three. I guess this is, you know, honestly, it's probably great for, I remember as, as our band was kind of winding down, we had a lot of uh, our fans who now had families, they had kids and things like that. And they weren't necessarily bringing kids to the show, but even trying to get there themselves on a Saturday night was difficult. This is great. You can easily find a babysitter from noon to three. Like, noon to three, that's yeah. right. I, 
I actually, there's one person I know who said that he is bringing his four-year-old daughter to the show, and I was like, you should get some four-year-old sized earplugs, because we're going to be just as loud at noon right. as It's adorable. We usually Have are you 10. seen those? Little pink headphones? The headphones? Yeah. The oh, yeah, they look like they're on a shooting range, a little yeah. baby shooting range. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're so tiny and violent. <laughs> and I've seen kids at rock concerts with like literally the, the headwear that they have at shooting ranges, and it's way too big for them, but it works. <laughs> It's hilarious because it's the size of their head. It's yeah. fun to watch. So it's going to be Yellow Tie Guy. It's going to be An uh, Since Antarctica. Who else is playing? Stone Driver. Stone Driver. And Bruce Parker, Excellent. formerly of Crooked Crow. Crooked I Crow. I know Bruce. Bruce is in the He's studio great. now recording some stuff. And uh, Stone Driver is going to be coming into the show. Uh, I think in a month or so, they're going to come in and, and mess around with us. And Sweet. It'll be lots of fun. So I want to play a clip from a song uh, that you gave us uh, to share. If you want to hear the whole song, I suggest you guys uh, just cut straight to the one hour mark of the show and you can listen to the whole thing in its entirety. But in the meantime, we're going to take just a, a listen to a sample of a song called Afraid of the Rain. Do you want to set this up? Uh, what is it about? Well, I won't say what it's about, but okay. I, I will say that and that I can't tell you how many times I listen to this song now and think of the words, I'm not afraid of Lorraine. <laughs> well, and I just can't get it out of my head. I'm going to die <laughs> with a song that I wrote. And every time I hear it, it's going to be, I'm not afraid of Lorraine. You'll hear it. You'll right, I mean. Here it is. Afraid of the Rain by Yellow Tie Guy. I'm not afraid of the rain. <laughs> So I'm very sad that we don't have some of Sense Antarctica play. Yeah, we didn't because they didn't actually write us and let us know they were going to be on the show. But Daniel didn't tell me I had to do it. <laughs> well, to be... We'll, to, he we'll just explain. showed up at our door and was like, I want to be on your show. <laughs> well, I think I'd filled out a link on yeah. somewhere. And yeah. then, right? And so then Adam had hit me up earlier today and, yes. and asked me for a WAV file, which I didn't even have already set up in a Dropbox. I have my MP3s up there. And so mm. it's like a little last minute for, for me as well. So Yeah. Now... So do you know a horrifying Lorraine or is that just No, I No. <laughs> no. No, I, okay. I can't I can't explain it. It was it's like a an it's Mondegreen. <laughs> Mondegreen. Mondegreen. Did that's you what make that's up a what, word. No, that's what those are called. What? Yeah, Mondegreen. It's like uh, excuse me while I kiss this guy. Yes, yes, okay. Oh. Or it, there's a bathroom on the right. Those are yeah. called Mondegreens. That's and I right. think I think Mondegreen is like a, it, it's a misheard song lyric in a, in and of itself, but I can't remember Does which da one. Does da budai qualify? <laughs> I think I, that's if the I don't eat, I will die. <laughs> yeah. right. I thought if, if I was if I was green, I would die. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. Both seem to be true. No, that song, that particular I'm blue is basically like the uh, Rorschach test of songs. <laughs> <laughs> you just you play it and you're like, what did you hear? Like, I'm in uh, need of a guy. No! no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we know now. Um, so how did you come about that song? Uh, obviously, you didn't meet a Lorraine. No. Uh, <laughs> well, the song was kind of inspired by being uh, realizing that I, I had at one point reached a place in my life unbeknownst to me where I was no longer willing to go outside while it was raining simply because it was raining. And that felt oh. really awkward to me because I, I was just like, it, you know, you, you remember being a kid, didn't matter if it was raining, you right. go out and you play, there's mud and there's puddles and things that come out, you know, when it's raining that and don't come out. kidnap you yeah. and give you candy. That's uh, right. <laughs> for me, it was really angry parents. Uh, yeah. get, out, get out, go out <laughs> and play. I don't care if there's lightning <laughs> at it. Right. I'm way scarier than that. Right. Don't be worried about the lightning. Be worried about me. That's right. If you run fast enough, I need you to go stand in this field and hold this baseball bat up in the air. Right. <laughs> An aluminum bat. An aluminum bat, yeah. <laughs> yes. Be home when the uh, street lights turn on. There's a power outage, Mom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> um, this song may be, may be close, a close proximity to like lying in bed, just like Brian... Wilson did, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's get out a... of the house, you know, go, go see some things and, and get cold and get, you know, get sunburned. And, right. and that, so what are the chances that you're going to run into Lorraine anyway? Right. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so, that's very cool. I like, I like the sentiment behind it. That's, uh, uh, it's always nice to hear songs that come from things from like a different angle. Uh, and that's, that's a really nice way of approaching that idea of kind of, uh, re, like uh, reestablishing your freedom, right? You know, go to Antarctica. You can go, you can go to Antarctica. <laughs> there's, right. no, there's no, there's no rain. rain there. <laughs> no Lorraine there. No, right. yeah. Uh, all right, so that's great. Uh, uh, is this a song that people will hear if they they come check you out on March 11th? Yeah, absolutely, excellent. Yeah. So you can see it uh, live, live on March 11th at Jam and Java in 
uh, Vienna, uh, Virginia. That's uh, noon to three. Or you can fast forward to the one hour mark of this show and listen to its entirety right now. But remember where you are now so you can jump back real quick because we are about to start uh, this week in history. So this week in history is uh, we're going to tell you some things that happened throughout history. Uh, We're going to change things up this week a little bit, and we're going to find out from you guys, once you've heard the entire list, what is the most important thing that happened this week in history. All right? Um, The rules are pretty simple that way. So, in the year 303... That's old. Emperor Diocletian orders the general persecution of Christians in Rome. Like, he made it law. Right. You like, are all terrible. Be unkind to those people. <laughs> be like, jerks to them. I feel like that's way more straightforward than anything we're doing today. Well, there's a version of that. It's just anybody on a bus. <laughs> like You can be unkind to anyone on a bus. You're like, you're on a bus with me? Then we're both shitheads. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is a bad idea. Both you can just bus. run by a bus and be like, fuck you all, and then run off, and you're better than them. Right. All well, of them. He, um, yes, it says here that he revoked all of their visas, and wait. And no, never mind. Cards. I'm reading the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, then he called all their news fake. <laughs> and then... Built a wall. Fuck, I'm reading the wrong thing. I'm that's, sorry. That's not it? That's <laughs> no, not the one I'm from, on the wrong page. I'm he, on the wrong page. Not from he drew <laughs> legs on all of their fish. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> he taught their bees to play soccer. Uh, uh, yes. Bastard. Ruined everything. All the natural law. <laughs> yeah. Out the window. Uh, uh, excellent. So that's 303. That's pretty... The year 303. And we move forward in time by a little bit. Yeah. 1827. <laughs> New Orleans celebrates its first Nothing else Mardi happened Gras. in 1600 no, years. No, it's 600 years. People were just twiddling their thumbs all week. Well, there weren't any buses. Right. And that's why they invented Mardi Gras, because people were like, we are so bored. Actually, Mardi Gras was a celebration in France before what? 1827. Nice. Of course. You know, it's, you know, it celebrates... It's the whole, like, Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday thing. Yeah. Uh, but the Spanish lords who owned most of New Orleans at the time were like, mm, no, yes. we do not allow fun. No. This is why no one is fucking in Spain. <laughs> no. <laughs> no sex for anyone. But finally, people are like, can we just wear masks and get drunk? And they're like, fine. Just do not have fun. <laughs> do not have any fun. Or at least do not know that you're having fun. <laughs> yes. You must. So did you fun. say Ash Wednesday? Because that changes everything. I thought it was Ass Wednesday. <laughs> No, no wonder they didn't have fun. <laughs> no ass on Wednesday. <laughs> they were like, ass Wednesday! Woo! Kids eat free. I- they were like, no, it's Ash Wednesday. Oh, that's... <laughs> so we can burn things? No, things have already burned. Oh, yeah. that's not Can't even you fun. smell it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a shame. Uh, in 1923, uh, Hindus uh, were not eligible to be U.S. citizens, according to the Supreme Court. They decided Hindus, Hindus, just in general. Nope, you can't be citizens because of all of that Hinduing. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know the reasoning other than the fact that apparently in 1923, uh, the Supreme Court was just full of fuckers. They like, really, <laughs> really hated Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Right? Like, nope, none of them. Look, they're dangerous. So yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, but if we fast forward uh, to 19, uh, 1980, that's or 1970, sorry, 1970, uh, this is something that I think might uh, be very important to both of you as musicians. Um, in 1970, Ernie of Sesame Street debuted his bathtub song on the TV series. It would then reach number 16 on the charts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Rubber Ducky. Best song ever yeah <laughs> it only made it to 16 uh yeah the only fuck the fuck is wrong with these this society persecute all those christians well in 1970 you weren't allowed to listen to music i think is what it was <laughs> right right if you were christian or hindu <laughs> in the u.s uh, only at mardi gras yeah that's that's my understanding so uh along those lines 10 years later 1980 the song I Will Survive wins the first and last Grammy ever awarded to Best Disco Recording. Which is super ironic, right? <laughs> well, it says, after watching it utterly dominate the musical landscape of the late 70s, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences gave disco their stamp of approval, yeah. deciding to give the Grammy Award for Best Disco Recording uh-huh. to that song, just as the musical style was preparing to die. <laughs> so but, so it basically it won, said... 
I will survive. And it was like, no, and then the won't. whole genre die. <laughs> you will not survive. See, they they should have kept it alive for non disco bands to win it. Kind of like metal, <laughs> uh, you know, Jethro Tull. Won <laughs> what they should have done it. They should keep it alive that particular category, but then just give it to people they hate. Right. So mm. like when somebody new comes on. They're like, oh, you're the best disco <laughs> act. Aww. Best, I really like that song, though. Yeah, best disco album of 2017. Like I don't a, even know. Who, who would you give it to? Bieber had to have released something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> would be the best. Hands down. <laughs> Can't over, argue there. Yeah, over and over again. I would have given it to the Black Eyed Peas a few years back. <laughs> they would have been like just cornerstone of that particular genre of I hate you. Perfect. Perfect. They had a song where they referred to women's breasts, which, for the record, are just beautiful, right? They're lovely. Yeah, they're a fantastic invention. And by, lumpy. Yeah, and then they referred and to they're them on ladies. By, by, the, <laughs> by the one term that associates breasts with cancer. Like, why would you do that? Oh, hey, lovely lady lumps. Oh, thanks. Now you just reminded me that Great. I am on chemo. Yes. <laughs> to be fair, I think that was Fergie on her own. You can't blame the rest of the peas for that. You don't think it was all of the peas that got together on that? I don't. I I I have only the name on the front of the on the front of the record to go by. You own the record. No. How it's, would you know? They have these things called record stores. I know they're going out of fashion. Where? But Where is a record store? There's actually a vinyl store in, uh, I think, Springfield. You know, I'm not surprised that those yeah. are still around. Well, it's that's pretty cool. CDs this, are going down, though. There's yeah. this DJ in there that DJs like, you know, Shut old up, school serious? funk and soul. I'm not kidding. Technically, that one guy dropped through the skylight of a vinyl store. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Different kind <laughs> of vinyl. Yeah, technically, <laughs> if you think about it, it was it was basically a vinyl store. Um, <laughs> So wow. all right. rubber and latex. This one, I think for me, uh, is my favorite of all of them. Uh, it's not particularly old, but I'd like to see this one personally win. Um, and that is a, uh, 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 let's see, a bank was robbed at gunpoint by mm -hmm. a nine-year-old <laughs> bank robber. And he got away with it. He got away with $118 before he surrendered later to FBI agents. Which, wow. That's the most adorable bank robbery ever. Like, hi, can I have your money, please? <laughs> and I, well, I'm sorry I took this. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll just get in the back of the car. Nine year old. Wow. Yeah. And that boy would grow up to be Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> that, that boy was known as Albert Einstein. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. I did it. Like, uh, also, you have to think, like, as a cashier, like, that's the weirdest position to be put in, right? When a nine-year-old is like, give me our money. And you're like, um, what? And then he's like, I have a gun. And you're like, you, uh, okay, that's a good point. That's a really, but, um, you're nine. Yeah. Is that a real gun? Yes, it's a very real gun. I'd like, bang, to, bang. See, I'd oh! like to see your ID, please. <laughs> I, I suspect him being nine years old, or her, as the case may be. It's may, a boy. Okay. Yeah. It might have something, like, that might be part of the reason he only got $118. The bank teller was like, here, here you go. Here's all of the money. He's like, let me just go back to the safe for a second. There you go. That's what we have. <laughs> pulls, out his, pulls out his wallet and just gives the kid that money. <laughs> and he's like, yes. <laughs> I would have given him a huge sack of rolled coins. You know, Watch him to struggle the out the door. <laughs> yes, like DuckTales. He's just got to so, carry it out. So happy. <laughs> and then he breaks his nose trying to swim in it. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the struggle is real. Carry this for <laughs> We're the FBI. We cannot carry the money for you. I just you. need help. Actually, they gave him like 30 bags. He would have he walked away with a lot more money, but he just couldn't carry much more weight. Yeah, that's what it was. $118 of pennies. <laughs> there you go. He, he got caught when he stopped and used his inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. Right. Thank God I brought my wagon. <laughs> Crunch. So, which one of these things that happened in history is the most historically important? Shannon. I know I have my opinions, and my opinions revolve entirely around Mardi Gras because <laughs> Mardi Gras is awesome. That's fair. So, Mardi Gras, uh, inception of Mardi Gras in New Orleans, is the most important thing in history. Do you concur, Daniel? 
most important thing in history. Dangerous, dangerous. No, I, I like I will survive for the most that's important. That's the one. Okay. Uh, because it's the first and the last. Yeah. You know, like that sa- seems like something that's the that's Alpha impressive. And impressive. The Omega. Yeah. Right. Somebody got to the top of the uh, of Everest, and then somebody else just followed him, and then someone else. That's Not right. important. Not impressive. Somebody's got to demolish Everest. It's- I am the last. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Look the- at all the rubble I made. <laughs> I, th- I think that we should look at the potential conspiracy theory of Aretha Franklin maybe making that happen. You know, like. The people behind Aretha Franklin are like the first, the last. Oh, yeah. 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 It was Gloria, Gloria Gaynor. Gaynor. Gloria Gaynor. Yeah, I saw the ghost. We're so bad at references tonight. <laughs> Leaks are made out of beans. We're doing Bloody, Beauty and the Beast Be- from Mary Bloody Poppins. And Blue Fish. We don't know anything when it comes to pop culture at all. Lentils. Yes. All right. So, I saw the ghost. <laughs> it's fake news. Of Hashtag. Gloria Gaynor. You saw the ghost of Gloria Gaynor? Yeah. Is she dead? At first, I was afraid. I yeah. was petrified. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. All right, so without further ado, we have wasted enough time on all our silliness. <laughs> you came all this way to be on our show, both of you. One announced. He found one her announced. on the street, you said. How yeah. far could she have gone? She Well, she had to get to the street somehow, and it was probably years of walking because she has no shopping cart to live in. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so we like to uh, do, uh, for a reminder of everyone, you've, you've got a show coming up uh, March 11th. It's a Saturday uh, from noon to 3. We've got Doors S- open at 11. At 11. Okay. Since Antarctica. So get up a little early. Yellow Tie Guy. We've got Stone Driver. We've got uh, Bruce Parker. Bruce Parker. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty packed show. It's going to be a good show. Yeah. And they have coffee there. They have coffee. And they have coffee and, and it's early. Yeah. Right. And beer. And so whatever your your taste is. I think no. if I you're drinking coffee beer. a little coffee whiskey beer. in my tea. So needless to say, a matinee with that kind of lineup is going to be pretty memorable. Uh, so we'd like to do a little segment that we call the five senses. And this is where science has proven that uh, memories are attached to our senses. Uh, and uh, so if you think about, uh, you know, if you if you smell a certain smell or, uh, you know, see a certain sight, you'll be reminded of things that have happened. So what I'd like to do is go through with each of you and. Uh, and try and find a uh, a memory that's attached to each of these senses. And I'll go back and forth so that you each have a little bit more time to think of one as we move from one to the other. But we'll put you under the spotlight first, Daniel, with uh, the sense of sight. Do you have something while on the road, while rehearsing, in studio, uh, anything that's happened that really sparked from your sense of sight? Something that I created as a result of something i've seen yeah or just uh you know something that was shocking or horrifying or amazing that really stuck with you something you saw i i think of uh i think of a lot of what i write as being music journalism like so capturing moments in time sometimes it's things that friends are going through and sometimes it's you know things going on in the news yeah so I, i really think that most of my music is comes from observing other people around me or, or trying to observe something in my own life from a different perspective. Oh, very cool. So, so your music in general is kind of sight related. You very, like. very visual in my own head. You okay. know, like so if you ever see me zone out in the middle of a song, I've gone to that space that I see whatever that is. And then, you know, sometimes I come back and I forget what my lyrics are. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Shannon? What is uh, your sight memory? So my sight memory would have to be, uh, for some reason, the band decided at one point that it was a really good idea to make a, a, a video and put it up on YouTube to promote our band's new T-shirts. Okay. And for some reason, this involved all the guys in the band taking their shirts off. Yeah. And I'm sort of slightly scarred by <laughs> by those those memories, and it's actually still up on YouTube. Up until that moment, you had not seen them topless, and then well, I think I still haven't seen Francie topless because he's he's very hirsute, so <laughs> he's kind of still wearing a sweater when he takes his shirt off. Well, at least he's warm. That's really good. Yeah, it's I'm glad to hear that. All right, so I'll jump back to you. Uh, a memory uh, when it comes to sound. This should be easy. Oh, for OK. So sound, I will say like w- one of the things like uh, when I when I write music or or collaboratively write music with the band, um, I like to I like to just sort of take a feeling. And, and one of the feelings that has been an influence is the sound sitting on your back porch uh, in Virginia or somewhere else kind of in the south. Yeah. On a summer night, those sticky, like humid summer nights, the sound of cicadas in the oh, trees. Yeah, that, yeah. Psh- that is just summer. Like that's the sound yeah. of summer. 
Yeah, it doesn't sound right. And like July doesn't sound like July till I hear that sound. No, absolutely. How about you, Daniel? What what's a sound memory for you? Road noise. And you try <laughs> you're like yeah. driving and it's the things in your car moving and the the sound of the tires, you know, as they I have you know, a bobblehead on my dash. Yeah, the bobblehead yeah. on the dash. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I think about uh, the a goofy movie, uh, and a, Disney's a goofy movie. <laughs> okay, and and so they have a sing along that starts with Goofy hearing all of these road noises and stuff, and so it's about being on the open road, and I always kind of go back to that that place. I like, always felt that that nine year old bank robber in me comes yeah, out. You know that that sound like after a show and you get in the van, you start heading home. It was always just so like relaxing. Like a soothing, like, hey, we did it, and now we're on our way home, and it's that like lullaby of... Right. And then the driver falls asleep. <laughs> and then you crash into a tree, and everyone <laughs> dies, and you get to sleep for a long time. You just repair the car with, with cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you just get a get a bassist for the next 15 years, and then when he starts to get into a, you know, a jazz band that you don't agree with, you kick him out and, <laughs> and get the guy from Ozzy. I feel like... <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect, yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, back to you, Daniel. A uh, sense of smell. Has anything happened on the road or in the studio or uh, at a show that uh, something amazing smelling or horrifyingly smelling or particularly memorable when it comes to smell, the most powerful memory sense? There, there was that Disco Biscuits show where, oh, okay. <laughs> where there was a, well, yeah. a very o- odorous you know, aura just throughout the room. There's... I'm guessing uh, it was a, a, a patchouli oil. Yeah. <laughs> Patchouli, patchouli and pot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's what it really was. Yeah, <laughs> that patchouli is just what you call pot when you right. don't want people to know it's well, pot. Well, yeah, it's it's like you smoking a lot of a lot of pot and then you try to cover it up with patchouli. and, yeah. and throughout Who history, knows? this has never worked. No, <laughs> never, because patchouli smells like pot. It's just what you tell kids. Like, is that pot? No, it's not. It's patchouli oil. <laughs> Shut up. Do your homework. <laughs> Why are your eyes so red? <laughs> exactly. I'm allergic to patchouli. <laughs> Why are you? That is. That's, that's such a smell. And you get it at shows all the time. And you're like, oh, I know what's happening. Mm-hmm. How about you, Shannon? I would say I would say the, the smell of green rooms everywhere, which is <laughs> kind of like a cross between feet and sandwiches that have been left out a little too long. And yeah. maybe a, a weird mildewy smell emanating from the plumbing. And a bit of victory. Right, because oh, yeah. you go into this transition. There's a point in in a uh, career, which I, I assume you guys have kind of hit, where you start off doing like bars and and uh, and venue like menu venues, like you know places where they just they have food, and you're in a corner or you're on a little bit of a raised lip that they call a stage, right? And then you move to a venue, dun, and like dun, you get dun. there, and like they do a sound check, and you go to a green room, and you're like, I'm I'm here, like I've. I've made that leap from just like loading into the corner of this restaurant and playing to I have some time to relax in this room that other people aren't allowed to be in. You know, there's a guy doing my sound for me. (laughs) That's the biggest thing. (laughs) Yeah. Those are the best. When you know you've made it when you've got roadies, though. That's true. That's true. Now, this may also fall into uh, the same category because I know that a green room can smell uh, as pungent enough to also be a taste. But do you have perhaps a separate memory when it comes to taste uh, involved with uh, so music in the band? The, the the taste most most correlated with my band is definitely the taste of a Jaeger bomb because we, <laughs> we do one before every show. Every show. Every show. So that's gonna that's gonna make the matinee a little a little interesting because yeah. I don't think I've ever done a, a noon Jaeger bomb. You might that, have to go to a meeting after that. Yeah, I, I may be put on a list. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hi, my name's Shannon. No, <laughs> said it earlier. I'm gonna say it again. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. How about you, Daniel? What do you have as a taste memory? As far as taste, it might be burgers because it seems like something that most venues have in general. Yeah, and so, that's true. And it's usually not terribly expensive to eat, you know, to order. And so you usually can try a burger from a lot of different places and, and you get to acquire yeah. a feel for where you are or the and quality of the venue. <laughs> have you have you played any places that have band pasta? Yes, I have at IOTA. That's my favorite. My favorite is band pasta. I tell other venues about band pasta all the time and make it a suggestion that they added to their menu. Yeah, it's have, all you had, because of Shannon, have you had band pasta? I've not had band pasta. So there's a bunch Nor of venues I. out there that have realized that it's way cheaper instead of like you can pick, you know, one thing from the menu for each member. Like they just make a big vat of some type of pasta. 
right? And so it's super cheap. It's like spaghetti or penne pasta. And the, it'll be some sauce that they have involved in it. And they just go, here's your big ass bowl of pasta. Enjoy. <laughs> but it's great because it's like family style. You're all sitting around eating pasta. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Iota has done it. But they bring um, out individual portions. They should do it more like the giant killer ice cream where it's like 16 portions with all oh, of the see, fixings. And then, nice. and then everybody has to pick see, off I've done of that it. Too. You've done that too? I, no, down in North Carolina somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember where it was, but yeah, yeah. just go in with your hands. I think first. it was North Carolina. We we had a place where they just brought out like a salad bowl of right. like of pasta and they were like, here's some paper bowls. Just eat out of these. Right. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> but it's like it, the reason I love it is it's a thing that only bands get. Like you can't go to a venue and order band pasta. Like it's not a thing. See, I've 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 worked behind the scenes with too many touring bands to think that a thing that only the bands get is good. Like a thing that <laughs> only the bands get is usually like lunch meat that's been sitting out for twelve hours. That's true. And like the weird kind bars that they're in their rider for no reason. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> because bands at the nine thirty club get cupcakes and those oh, are delicious. Oh no, the nine thirty the 930 cupcakes are amazing that's another one where you just you bite into that and you're like yes <laughs> i'm eating 930 club cupcakes it's because it is the sweet taste of victory it is it is it absolutely is all right so last but not least we have the sense of touch Ooh. Ooh. uh who do we leave off with who's whose turn is it victor you haven't uh, been paying shannon's attention turn. shannon's turn okay. okay you get to go i flipped the coin <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for the for the sense of touch, that's that's easy. Every every uh, every show, like uh, I, I start singing, I get through the first song, and everybody's like standing like ten feet away from the stage because yeah. they always do that. And I go, no, 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 you, I like to touch you. You got you got to yeah. come closer. Come and, I and then I I actually touch them, and they're usually kind of sweaty because yeah. the first song's always like riotous. So sure. so fan sweat. That that's, is that's the, <laughs> that's the touch memory because you it's know it's feeling. working right. Like yeah. at that point, you're like, okay, they got, got them moving. Up. Because nothing's worse than the feeling of like fans over there, right? Like right. you're all over. No, just come to be part of this. You they're came. All, you came to see us. Come they're on. They're worried about being the first one. Nobody yeah. wants to be the first one. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel, how about you? Well, if we're go sticking with sweat, it, for me it's after the show when I'm covered in sweat, and then somebody <laughs> wants to come up and hug me, and I feel so bad for them. Like I'm just like. <laughs> Of like I, I could make so many other suggestions about ways that we could show our approval for just, one another. You we know? just touch like, elbows. That'd be great <laughs> if we could just do that. So just, you're a nice person. After show, I am drenched in sweat. I'm like, you there in the back. You're getting a hug. Come here. I'll just, go, like, I'll just tackle somebody. I, maybe that's what I should do. Is just pick a target <laughs> right. next Own time it. and go. I'm coming for I'm you. I'm sweaty. After the show. You're gonna like it. <laughs> you just jump into the audience. You're like, Grandpa. Right. <laughs> yeah, get everybody all at once. Squish. Warm. If, you can get, if you get enough people to all like group hug you at once, it'll just drain all of the sweat off of you, right? It'll just squeeze it like right. a towel. That's right. right? That's how that Bring me it'll, out. It'll all break apart. It'll just be you standing in a puddle. And, and they're like, yeah, I'm dry. I'm dry. Look at me, guys. That'd be great. That's a way to get through it. I, like I it. always had to like uh, keep like a change of shirt or something. Like I'd go off stage and then I'd change shirts so that I'd be like, can I come out and be like, sorry about the. I probably hit you. <laughs> with the, with the no, see, the the key is you gotta you gotta just gotta lose your clothes during the show, right? right. And then you no. don't have sweaty clothes. You, you just wait a while. You dry see, off. Put your clothes back on. You're see, fine. Victor, you're much more of an attractive man than I am, so <laughs> that works for you. For me, I'd be like. Why are you on the other side of the That's room That's the worst again? excuse ever. <laughs> you were closer just I, a minute ago. I, I think Keith and I would be attracted to those interested in men who are still wearing sweaters once they take their shirts <laughs> off. That seems to be a thing. All right, so we've got very little time left. So I'm going to go. We usually don't make it all the way through this. I'm going to go with the sixth sense. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So which, uh, uh, Shannon, which uh, superpower would you like to have if you could pick anything? Oh, 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 uh, what would be mind your reading. Sixth sense? Oh, mind reading. Mind reading. Why is that? Um, cause it'd be really useful to know when people are lying to you. <laughs> no, cause then you'd be like, oh, that's rude. He said nice things and he didn't mean any one of them. <laughs> eh, yeah, but it'd be really, really handy for, uh, for, for, you know, figuring out this entire presidential administration. <laughs> That's true. Solid. Just follow the leaks. It's easy. <laughs> the dam's leaking. It's over there. Daniel, how about you? What would be your. Your sixth sense. What is your superpower? I always thought it would be cool to be able to do the metamorphoses or transformations into different people or animals. Oh, like, like in the shape a lot of, of a gorilla. Or like I was really interested in the characters. Oh, oh, we've run out of time. Forget all right, you have that. to come tell us all the things you're going to turn into next time you come. You got by. it. All right, absolutely. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Daniel, for coming out. Uh, 
So uh, don't forget, everybody, March 11th, Jam and Java, noon to three. That's in Vienna, Virginia. Go check out uh, Since Antarctica, uh, Yellow Tie Guy, Stone Driver. Bruce Gibbons. Bruce Yeah, no, we've got Bruce everybody Gibbons. playing. Bruce Parker. Parker. See, we don't know anything. Lentils. Check <laughs> out the lentils. <laughs> Join the AWH mob. Like us, follow us, retweet us, and share us, and, sh- and show the show on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and another Wasted Hour, and we'll munch a new on the show. Next week, the very talented local musicians, Better Homes. If you enjoyed the show, email us at contact at anotherwastedhour.com. If we offended you, uh, then leak it to the press. We don't care. Thanks to Kevin Evinger, McNally22, Justin Rogers, Big Metal Records, Alchemical Records, and the uh, engineer Adam Spector for all their contributions. Thanks to Victor, uh, for, and most of all, thanks to Yellow Tie Guy and Since Antarctica for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. I'm not afraid of the rain. I'm not afraid.